Yes, welcome once again to Hen House Studios live video show today. Hen House Studios is a community recording studio located in Venice, California, and we record bands for free. Check us out. If you want to get in contact with us, please watch the end credits of our show and you'll learn how to get in touch with us. Yes, Hen House Studios, hear the music, see the stories. Today we have a very special show for you today. We have a lot of music from all over the world that was all recorded at our studio. The first band is Adawe, which is an African-influenced band, West African music-influenced band. Six Women, which is unusual. I don't know any other band like this. I've never heard or seen any other band like this. Uh, actually, the, music, the band is leader is Anindo, who's from Kenya, and the rest of the musicians, I think they're all American except one. One of them is Israeli. Um, check them out. Incredible band playing some original uh, African influenced music and some traditional African music. Adawe, roll clip. Put your ear to the earth and listen. This is Adawe. <laughs> <laughs> Dawe is an ensemble of six international women percussion and vocalists. Our concept is that the voice and the drum are the original instruments and that we want to play roots music for the new millennium. Our music is not something that people are used to. This music is a bridge between so many different cultures and traditions and it's something that's totally unique at the same time. Here we are in lovely Marina oh, Del Rey, Marina Del Rey Southern California. Gorgeous. Yes. This is where it all happens. We love you. This is where it all goes down. Here we go. Yeah. This is from South Africa, and it's a traditional song in the language of Xhosa. And it's all vocal percussion. So you're going to enjoy that. Also, it comes from a tradition of women in West Africa gathering together in the moonlight and they raise songs which are very old but they're always changing them with improvisations and that is called a dawe. <laughs> Not only do the women sing together, but they support each other in their daily lives. They're always there for each other. They'll perform at any um, important events in a woman's life, a birth, a death, a marriage. Um, so that's also very important to our group. You know, we're not just coming together to rehearse and do the show and that's it. You know, we're really in each other's lives. We really are there for each other. <laughs> Adawe is roots music, but it always has its um, eyes towards the future as well. 
I guess we have our feet in tradition, but we're open to any possibilities. We're expressing ourselves, finding our voice. No one can tell the future, but just remember it all began at Hen House Studios. Yes, Adawe, six beautiful women being influenced by West African music. The next band that we're going to show you is Raices. Raices in Spanish me means roots, and this is one of the biggest bands we've actually ever, ever recorded at Hen House Studios. It's a 14 piece band, highly influenced by Latin music, especially here in Los Angeles, which, Los Angeles with the large Latin community that we have. Uh, I'm not sure if he's in the clip, but Bobby Matos is a very famous percussionist, Latin percussionist here in LA, came by and, and helped out. So check it out. Here they are, Raices. My name is Miles. I've had the pleasure of playing with the original Latin jazz project known as Raices. He's going to do the call, and then that's going to call me in with the bass and the piano. And that's when you want us to play more. Right. You can mix it up, yeah, that's yeah. basically mixing it up more. The band has been playing together. Um, under different guises for uh, a little over two years. Tim, will you give me the blanket? Like a blanket on you know, we, we just had the opportunity to record at the Hen House Studios, which we're very happy about. And what I would like to do with this is um, share it, because music is great. It's, it's nice to even play amongst yourselves, but there comes a time when you feel really strongly about your music, and it's time to share it with uh, everybody, anybody who's got a pair of ears. So really, that's the ultimate goal. The original composition on, on this uh, recording is called Afro Explosion. It's got a little elements of Brazil, Cuba, uh, you might even hear some Afrobeat flavor in there, and uh, I think it came off pretty well. kind of took elements from uh, some of our favorite groups, Mandrill, Ocho, War, Pucho and the Latin Soul Brothers. These are bands that, that you know, I grew up listening to. And we kind of uh, drew from that mix, which is just basically African roots, um, but also embellished with, with Latin flavor and, and R&B and funk and soul and jazz and, and uh, kind of all blending it into one piece. And that's what Afro Explosion was about. tunes, you know, they're jazzy, but at the same time, they're made to really enjoy and to just listen to and enjoy and dance if you want, shake everything you got, you know, it's not made to really think about. We play music that we love because we love it. 
As a musician, you just want to play. I mean, there's a monkey inside of me that just wants to get out and play. What Raices is planning on doing is put out an Afro-Latin jazz recording, drawing from the influence of the material that has inspired me, which is from 50s, 60s, and 70s. It's very fertile Afro-Cuban sound from everybody from Sylvester Mendes, Chico Mendoza and Ocho, bands like Mandrill, Willy Bobo, Mongo Santa Maria, a lot of the really classic material, putting our own spin on it. This was the first step in the right direction, and there'll be many more steps along the way. Well. Yes, Raices, Root Latin Music. We are Henhouse Studios Live. Hear the music, see the stories, check us out. We record bands, many, many bands. Our next band that we're going to feature on our show today is called the Mind's Ear Ensemble. This is a band that is actually very exper experimental with influences from India, Africa, jazz, Western music. They draw from all over the world. An experimental band you know, influenced much by Adam Rudolph. Some of the people in this band are students of Adam. That's not to say that these are students. These are students of music, but they are highly professional. So let's bring them on. A great band, the Mind's Ear Ensemble. My name is Miles Shrewsbury, and I'm a part of the Mind's Ear Ensemble. I was going to call it the Mind's Ear, two separate words, the Mind's Ear Ensemble. And uh, Michael, the, one of the woodwind players, he, he thought that sounded kind of corny. His idea was kind of like to disguise it. Uh, make it one thing because that's what it is. It's like it's 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 one thing. We spelled it M Y N Z E E R, and that's just what we came up with. Introduce yourself and the name of your project and what you what you're doing in the project. Matthew Zebley is the mind's ear. I play reeds. My name is Brad Colden, and I play drums and metal and other stuff for the Mind's Ear Ensemble. I'm Patrick, I'm playing the skins on the, in the Mind's Ear Ensemble. I'm Michael Byrne-Briar, I'm a member of the Mind's Ear Ensemble. My name's JP, yeah, yeah, let's and I play just, upright bass for the Mind's Ear. Yeah. The multi readers plays saxophones, flutes, and alto clarinet. And the percussion players play anything from congas, tablas, uh, djembes, frame drums, multi-colors, just all sorts of stuff. I went to Cal State Long Beach for a year, a percussion program. I realized that music in a school atmosphere is not where I wanna, how I wanna learn music. I, I definitely seek teachers, but I, I enjoy seeking teachers that, that you seek personally, instead of you know going to an institution and then having somebody Say, well, this is our this is our repertoire and this is our guideline. And that's how you're going to learn it, and everybody's going to learn it the same way. And then when you come out, you'll probably sound like them. I wasn't into that at all, and I realized that this is what most schools are about. got really heavy in, into Indian tabla and I always knew that I had to get a set and study it. That's when I began studying from my, my present teacher, Abhiman Kaushal. He sent me also to India to study from his guru because I wanted to travel to India and learn. And I stayed there for six months and learned from his guru who was 66.
the music we do is it's world music and it's it's a new type of world music what we're trying to do is we're trying to take influences or traditions from around the world and trying to mix them in a new way and create like a new world music so that's what we're trying to do and we're still we're still we're on the path i hope Yes, Hen House Studios, Free the Music. That was the Mind's Ear Ensemble, a great experimental band right here from Los Angeles. Our next artist is Sharon Farber, who is a composer, a uh, very talented composer. She came to the Hen House and needed to do some music for a, a movie that she was commissioned to score for. Very talented young composer. She's definitely on, on the way up and, and one you should really look out for, Sharon Farber. Okay, guys, you ready to roll tape in there? Let's do it. Yeah, we got it. All right, let's do it. At the end, after we play three times, we should end on F minor seven, uh, six nine. F minor six nine, sorry. My name is Sharon Faber, and I'm a composer, an orchestrator, and conductor. Yeah, let's go to one and seven. I came to the hen house in order to record some film projects that I was scoring. I like to do projects that have a meaning. Um, I'd like to do projects that say something important to people because I want my music to say something to people. One that I did at the hen house, it's a jazz musician that his girlfriend gets killed in a car accident and he can't play anymore. And there's one point that he goes to the grave and he, he tries to wake her up. I was born in Israel and I started uh, my musical adventure when I was seven as a piano student. I knew I didn't want to be a concert pianist, you know, always play compositions that other people have written. I just needed something that I can create. I met someone uh, who kind of introduced me to film music and film scoring. I thought about it and I said to myself, well, I love drama, I love classical music, and I think that film music will give me an opportunity to write orchestral music and have my music played and still touch people's, people's heart. The name of it is Insanity and that's what I really want to portray here, like really free, really, really crazy. What I like to do always before I record a cue is I tell the musicians a little bit about the film and about um, the music that I wrote and what I intended. And then before cues, I'm trying to explain what the scene is about so they can feel what I'm talking about. I majored in film scoring and classical composition and came to Los Angeles as the recipient of the uh, Academy of TV Arts and Sciences uh, internship in film scoring. I started working for Shirley Walker, orchestrating for Superman and Batman. And this was a huge experience for me because I learned so much from her. And after two years, I actually started writing music for the show. And since then, I had the opportunity to score a lot of independent features and two features for Showtime and Fox and HBO, and I've been very, very blessed. Okay, uh, let's record, uh, let's you wanna, keep that. You want to save this? Yeah, let's save okay. it. It's not bad. 
Most of the time, the composer comes to the picture at the very end. We get a film with no music. From nothing, you have to create this beautiful thing. It's a challenge, it's a challenge. And then go into the intro part four times and to the end. Okay, yeah. Okay, got it? Mm -hmm. It's really, really important to be able to listen to the director. Here they take their baby that they worked so much to create and they give it to someone else to dress it up. So it can be kind of a scary experience for them. So it's really important to understand and, you know, to, to be collaborative. If you don't notice the music in the film, that means it's good. If it draws too much attention, it means that something is not working because a film is, is, has you know, a few dimensions and music is one of them and it all comes together. It's something that can bring a scene to a new level. There's so many ways to take a scene and to score it. There's so many ways and many of them will work. I think this is the challenging part to actually bring your own voice to what you do. And it doesn't matter if it's drama or, you know, comedy or whatever. There's still something that people say, oh, this is John Williams, oh, that's probably Sharon, you know, and this is probably Ellen Silvestri. So I think this is, the, you know, the challenging part for me to bring my own voice to what I do. Yes, that was sweet. I hope you learned something from that. I certainly did. That was Sharon Farber explaining her theories on music composition for film. Incredible, incredible young composer. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for tuning in to Hen House Studios Live, our video show today, and I hope you enjoyed our show, and I hope you'll go out and support local musicians wherever you might live, because the independent musician really does need your support, especially in these times. It's a, actually a good opportunity for all of them. Anyway, our next band is called Hollow Log. Hollow Log is, um, they describe themselves as a hillbilly band filled with energy. They play folk music from all over the world. Not, not only do they in embrace this music, they'll go and learn a folk song from a foreign country and sing it in the same language. And a really incredible, highly talented band led by Dave Markowitz, a, a friend of mine who I've known for about 20 years. And, on this clip, we'll take you on a little bit of a journey. We're going to go out to Catalina Island. If you don't know, Catalina Island is a small island about an hour boat ride away from Los Angeles. So here we go, out to Catalina Island with Hollow Log. Here on the most remote and beautiful corner of Los Angeles County, 26 miles from the mainland on Catalina Island. And Catalina Island is a very special place, an amazing 75 square miles that's been preserved and kept in its natural state for the most part, except for a tiny little town here called Avalon. And this is where I've been choosing to live for the last three years. My name is Dave Markowitz. My band Hollow Log came to record at the Hen House. Just listen, I gotta read. Yeah, there's a yeah. Everyone... Hollow Log is people who love to play different kinds of acoustic music on different kinds of acoustic instruments, getting together and being creative with, with that palette, you know, and we're not coming at it as folk singer songwriters, we're coming at it as people who play bluegrass and international music, some gypsy violin and some uh, Irish accordion, and we're creating something using those colors. It has a very 
folk kind of sound to it, but the more you get into the music, you realize we're doing something that's not really found by tradition. I'm going to give you a one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. fun to take drive. Right. Voice light, voice light. We recorded a song called Cookie Jar, parentheses, caught with your hand in. Kind of a klezmer, zany klezmer tune, very unexpected type of tune. One morning, you woke up with lust in your eyes, a greed in your heart, a hunger for something outside. Your lonely little room. You walked in the cafe, your sad little hand, clutching your papa, who didn't understand. Daddy's little man is only human, and then you had the nerve to lie. Everyone's been caught with the hand in the cookie jar some, at some point in their life, so you know, a song about something that we can all relate to, I think, always always works at some level. So um, it has like political meanings, it has you know, kind of childhood meanings, it has kind of a philandering kind of sexuality meaning to it, and it kind of just just whatever you bring to it is is how the song means to you, you know. The grown-ups were talking, the manager was talking, his premises invaded by a rat. Shame, shame, shame upon the family name. Seven generations living with a stain upon their reputation. And then you had the nerve to run away and not to face it like a man. Creation happens in, in spaces. You know, it's not necessarily just inside your head. It's getting together with people in a place. And I think that's you know part of what the Hen House is about. You know, you've created a studio for bands to to come and do their thing because you know a lot of people have tiny little recorders at home in their living room and things like that. But that doesn't necessarily foster good music or good recordings or good creations. And so you've created a space for bands to do that. And for me, this is my space. Catalina Island is a space for me to be creative. And through the people who are here and even people who aren't here who I interact with, that gives me a chance to be a more creative person, a more creative musician. I think my connection with this island is is uh, something that has grown over the last three years really strongly, but I can't say I'm the kind of guy who always walked around in Bermuda shorts and, you know, listened to reggae all the time or anything like that. I, I would just say that, you know, to, uh, to everyone out there, sometimes you have to follow your path and sometimes you just have to uh, trust that even though you may not have built this path, the path is, is, uh, is there for you. <laughs> Did that make any sense? <laughs> Cut with your hand in the cookie jar.